Hi, so in this video I want to talk about the Arrow library. Now in previous videos or in my Python Fundamentals course I covered libraries such as PyTZ or Humanize which is in this channel as well as Python's of course built-in daytime functionality. Now these libraries are great and they can be used independently but the Arrow library kind of puts all that together in a much simpler and powerful way and I use that library all the time and I recommend that you use it as well. So let's just go through the Arrow library and I'll just really hit kind of the main highlights of that library and how I use it frequently. So the library is available here, this documentation as usual, the notebook, this notebook here is in the GitHub repo, which is linked below. And this is where the uh, Arrow library is, it's in GitHub. And then they also have a really good documentation set available here. You have a user guide, which kind of runs you through the main highlights. And then if you want more details, you can go to the API guide and then you'll have a whole lot more information on what this library has. So to install it, you would just pip install that, uh, pip install arrow into your virtual environment, and that's it, we're ready to go. So I'm actually not gonna use the date util parser, we don't need it. The arrow actually doesn't provide the same kind of parser that date util does. So if you wanna pass dates, then you're gonna to wanna to use the parser from dateutil, even though Arrow actually has a dependency on the dateutil library. It doesn't kind of pass the parser through, so you have to use it directly instead. But we're not gonna use it today, we don't need it. So it's very easy with Arrow to create aware and naive date times. For example, if we want a current date, the current UTC date, we just say arrow.utc now. And you'll notice that it has the time zone information. So this is an aware date time. Now this is slightly different from Python's built-in UTC now, which is this one. We can use date time, date time .utc now, and that works. We get a naive date time, right? It's gonna be the UTC time, but it's naive. It won't have the time zone. But furthermore, it's deprecated. So we shouldn't be using this anymore. If we wanna get the current UTC time using Python, then this is the way to do it now. We have to say datetime.now and then datetime.utc. And then we get this datetime information here, which as you can see, has the time zone attached to it. So that did become an aware datetime object. But I don't know about you, I prefer writing this over writing this and having to remember that syntax. Now it's also very easy to convert arrow objects into regular date time objects. You just use the date time attribute and you have a regular date time. But usually when we use arrow, we don't need to transform this to date time. We might at some point in the code, but usually we just use these arrow objects because they have a whole lot more functionality built in and they handle time zones properly, just like we would using PyTZ. So if we want to get a naive date time, we know kind of, you know, how we have to do that in Python, and this, it's kind of complicated. We can use PyTZ, we can use Python, and, the, you know, it's, it kind of gets a little complicated. You have to remember every time how to do it. In Arrow, it's very simple. You just use the naive property, and you get a naive date time, which is basically the date time, but with the TZ info dropped. Now, you can also extract the time zone of, uh, from an Arrow object. You have the TZ info property which in this case, because it was UTC, will tell me TZ UTC, but for other time zones, you'll have other values being returned. And of course, Arrow uses the same arguments that you can use with date time, so you can pass in the year, month, day, uh, hour, minutes, and seconds, and so on. It will work the same way. Now, as you can see though, Arrow usually has time zone aware. So when you create a date time object using these parameters here, you're gonna get a naive date time. With Arrow, you will get an aware date time. And since I didn't specify a time zone here, Arrow assumes that this was UTC. So speaking of time zones, it's very easy to work with time zones in uh, Arrow. Now it's easy with PyTZ, but it's actually, I think, a little simpler in Arrow. If I want to create now, for example, right, which we saw just now, when we do now, but when we do UTC now, that's gonna be in UTC. If we do now, that would be local.
but I want this to be, let's say, in the US central time zone. Well, that's all I need to do. I just say arrow.now and I pass in the time zone name. It could be whatever you want, right? And so now we get this arrow object, which as you can see, has a five hour offset minus five from UTC. And now converting from one time zone to another is just as easy. You take your date time and you say dot two and then the new time zone that you want. And as you can see, when I convert to US specific, then I get this time, which has changed, but my offset from UTC, of course, has also changed since it's the same date time, just represented in two different time zones. Now, if you've watched my videos or my courses, you know that my preferred approach to dealing with date times is to always transform any incoming date times into naive UTC date times and only convert to some other time zone for outgoing data. Now, you don't have to with Arrow. It, it is able to handle date arithmetic with time zones and daylight savings correctly. But personally, I still prefer working with naive date times and just keeping things relatively simple, right? When you're dealing with UTC, you don't have to worry about time arithmetic because there is no daylight savings in UTC. But we can also do this using Arrow. So let's say we have incoming data, right? So we have this input, it's a string that we're getting maybe from a JSON object or someplace, or a, you know maybe a CSV file. And we can convert that into a naive UTC date time. You'll notice there is an offset here. So this is not a UTC date. There is an offset from UTC. So we can, because this is an ISO format, we pass this into the get function in the arrow module. We pass it the string. That's going to create an arrow object. And then we convert to UTC. And then we get the naive date time out of that. And then we get, therefore, a regular Python date time that's naive. So if you're looking to transform your incoming dates from these strings that have an, a UTC offset and you want a naive UTC time, then it's very, very simple to do using Arrow. You don't have to jump through all the hoops that you would have to using you know, Python and PyTZ to eventually get to that state. So the next thing is let's look at formatting date times. Now, as we know, in Python, we can use the string format time method where we can supply some specific format to use using a variety of possible tokens. And these tokens can be found here. So if we take a look at them, you can see that we have all these things. They're called directives here. I call them tokens because that's what Arrow calls them. But you can see that if we want, let's say, the month as a uh, full name, we can use a percentage capital B. If we want an abbreviated name, it's a percentage lowercase b. If you want the year, then it's a capital Y. If you want without the century, it's a lowercase y. The hour is fine, 24 hour clock. This one's less intuitive. Percentage I for the 12 hour clock, right? Percentage P. And then M actually is the minutes, not the months, as you would think, right? If you want the month, it's the lowercase m, but the uppercase m is the minutes. And then seconds is uppercase s and so on. So if we go back, we can basically start, let's say, with some time. So I'm going to use now pi tz, right? So I'm going to create a aware time using pi tz, not using arrow. Arrow would be simpler. I just want to show you how we do it with PyTZ. So I specify my time zone, and then I want to localize to that time zone. Basically, I want to create this date time attached to this particular time zone. So that's one way of doing it. So I get this particular time, and then I can use the string format time using these uh, tokens over here, these directives, percentage lowercase b. So this gives me the month, three letters, I get 0, 05. I don't have a way to just say March 5, at least not that I'm aware of. So I just get 0, 05. I get the year. Then I can specify the 12 hour clock. Again, I cannot remove the padding here, that zero padding. I don't know if there is a way of doing it or not. I'm not aware of one. If you do know, please leave a comment and let us know how it can be done using directives like this. And then the same, you know, I want here like the, the name of the time zone. So this would be Mountain Standard Time and then the AM PM. OK, so I don't know about you, but I constantly have to go back to this list over here 
right, to look it up because I, I can't remember. I mean, I kind of remember some of the main ones, but then every time I get confused with, well, is it lowercase m or is it uppercase m? That's probably the one that causes me the most problems. Uh, but anyways, um, so Arrow also has a formatting function and it utilizes a far more intuitive set of tokens and those are available in the documentation here. So you can see that if I want the year as a full year, then I use YYYY. If I want the month, let's say, without the leading zero, I can. It's a single M, capital M here. And then capital MM for a zero padded month. And then I've got day as well, right? I can do the same thing. Now, we also have a few others as well. We have the hours. You can see that the, tw the 24 hour clock uses capital HH. The 12 hour clock uses lowercase HH or just the single one if you don't want the zero padding. And then you have also AM, PM. You can use the capital A or the lowercase A depending on what you want. You've got minutes, seconds. These are all lowercase. You've got subseconds as well. Time zones, you can have either just the time zone offset, like let's say Z, or you can have it in this format over here, right, with the capital ZZ. And then if you want the name, and let me make that a little bit bigger. If you want the name, then you have this, right? You can use the ZZZ and so on. And you can have a microsecond timestamp or a second timestamp if you want to use epochs, for example. You can very easily convert your date times to epochs using also this formatting here. So let's take a look. All we want to do here, we'll start again with this date. Now I'm going to use the arrow way of defining this date instead of using PyTZ. So again, I've got the same date and time. And then I just set my TZ info to be the PyTZ time zone America Phoenix. So you can use PyTZ time zones with arrow. That works perfectly well. And so we get this arrow object and now let's format it. So I can do, you know, I want a similar formatting except I don't want the, the zero padding. Well, that's easy. We do MMMD, right, for the non-zero padded, YYYY for the year. Then we have the hour, which is I'm using lowercase because I want this and this is not MM in caps. This is MM this way. And then we have this output over here. So to me, Arrow is more intuitive in terms of those tokens than the, those other directives that we just saw. Now, furthermore, Python has a single standard ISO output formatting. So if we take that DT as a datetime object, right? So that's regular Python datetime object. It has the ISO format method. And so we get this result over here. Now, Arrow, on the other hand, has a few more that are documented here. So if we take a look at this, you can see that there are a few more like format Atom, format cookie, different RFC formats, W3C formats, and so on. So there are a few others as well. It gives you a sample output. So let's take a look at it here. If I want the ISO format, well, I, remember DT is the arrow object, right? So DT.ISO format. So arrow also supports ISO format and we get the same thing as we would with Python. But now we have these other formats as well. We can format cookie, format W3C, whatever other kind of standards are out there. You have those readily available. You don't need to define your own formatting string. Now let's look at date arithmetic a little bit, because as we already know, we can of course perform various date arithmetic in Python. And of course in pure Python, you really need to convert everything to UTC Aware or naive doesn't really matter, but to UTC, because Python historically hasn't handled date arithmetic very well with daylight savings times and time zones, right? So I don't, I never use plain Python for date arithmetic unless everything is back in UTC. So always, I always convert to UTC. So let's take a look at some of the Python things you can do. So let's take a Python date time. So this is now a UTC date time. It is aware, that's fine, but it is in UTC. And I can add to it three days, for example. And so I am going to get this new date time. Now time delta objects are limited to parameters like weeks 
and then days, hours, all the way down to milliseconds. You don't have years, you don't have months, you don't have quarters, you don't have anything like that, right? Time delta is a little bit limited. So Arrow has expanded this. So let's take a look at how we do things in Arrow. In Arrow, it's called shifting. So when we do, when we add this time delta, we're shifting, right? And so that's what Arrow calls it, shifting. So let's start with an Arrow object. We'll do UTC now. And now I can shift and I can shift with months, days, years, hours, minutes, and there's a few more. Just go ahead and look at the documentation. You'll see the other ones. And the thing is, it handles DST changes just fine. Let's take a look at this, where I'm taking this date time, but now I'm putting it in the U.S. Central time zone. Now, at this time of year in U.S. Central, DST is active, and we can see it this way. We can call the DST method of the arrow object, and it shows us that there is a time delta, right, of 3,600 seconds, one hour. It's, it's a, there's a one hour difference. Now, if date time was not active, we would see this come back as zero. In fact, let's take a look. If we take December 15th, right, daylight savings is not active in U.S. central time zones on uh, uh, December 15th. And so if we look at the DST for that, you can see that the time delta is zero. So that's, where, that's one way of knowing if you have daylight savings on and also what the offset is with the daylight savings for a specific date time. Now, let's go back to our example, right? So we have this date time, which is basically in DST right now, right? This, this March 18th is in DST. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift it by eight months. So now I end up in November of 2024 at this time. And notice that the offset has changed, 05, 06, and the time has basically stayed the same but the offset is different because the DST has changed. Now let's look at these two very, very useful functions, floor and ceiling. Have you ever needed to get the start time, let's say the start day of a given date time? Well, Arrow makes this super easy. Let's take this date time that we had already defined before, which is this Arrow object. You can see it's March 18th and it's 2348. I want the beginning time. Sure, in Python, I could use replace and do all kinds of things like that. But with arrow, I can just say floor. And I can tell it that I want to floor based on the day. And so I'm going to get the day floored at the beginning of the day. Now, of course, I could just do, say, the floor at the hour. That's fine, too. And you'll notice that now my date stayed the same and my hour is not zero, but it's 23 because I floored the hour. So this is kind of the framing, right, that we're using, day, hour. And you have other frames too available, all the standard frames that Arrow supports, like year. So I can get the year that corresponds, the beginning of the year that corresponds to this particular date by using floor year. And then the same thing goes with ceiling, right? You can get the other end of the spectrum. So we can use ceiling. Let's say we do the month. So if we do the a ceiling on the, uh, with a frame of month, then we get the last day of March and then the kind of the last, based on the resolution of our timer here, of our, of our times, the kind of the last second or millisecond of the day. And of course, notice that it supports DST changes. You'll notice here, that when we did floor year, we went back to January of 2024, but in January, we have daylight savings active. Whereas in March 31st, we no longer have daylight saving active. Okay, so that's floor and ceiling. That's very useful, very quick to do that kind of calculation. We often need it. You can use quarter as well if you want the start and end quarter, for example. That's supported as well. Now let's look at spans, because another very common operation is to find a beginning and end date time given some starting date time and some criteria. And it's kind of related to floor and ceiling, but now what happens is that the span is going to give us both at the same time. So we're going to get a tuple back. So let's take a look at this date again, right? This was the date that we had, 2024, 318, 2348 in this particular uh, offset. Now we can do a span of that date using a quarter frame. 
And so you'll notice that we get the first day of the first quarter and the last day in minutes, seconds, etc. of the last day of the quarter. Or maybe we just want to find the beginning and end month, right? So we get the floor and ceiling basically at the same time. So we get, we use the frame month and we get the floor month and the ceiling month, right? Of that particular date. So span is just a quicker way of getting both the floor and the ceiling. And there are other things you can do with spans as well. Take a look at the documentation, but this is a pretty standard way of using it. And it's really useful. Now we also have ranges. Now often we have a start and end date and we want to iterate in some step size, be it hourly, daily, or quarterly, or whatever, between those two dates, right? We want to create these intervals that go between those two dates. So let's see how we can do it. Let's set a start date and I'll do my start date January 10th of 2023 at some time. And then the end date will be January 15th of the same year, but at a different time, at midnight. Here I'm at uh, 3 and here I'm at 0, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a range. I'm going to use the range function, right? That Or the range method that's available on the arrow class. And I'm going to give it the framing saying I want days and I want to start at start date and end at end date. Now you'll notice one thing is that if we look, we indeed get what we expect when we start, right? So we get the first day, which is 2023-110. Look how it preserves the time. So we got 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, and we stop on the 14th. We don't hit the 15th because the 15th was at zero, not at three. So we're kind of three hours short. So it doesn't get included in the last day. Now, if we change the time to five, so now that three is in there, right? Or we could even say, well, let's, let's do it with five first. And then you can see that we get 3.30, 3.30, but now we get 1.15 included as well. Now, what if we do 3.30 exactly? Is it inclusive or exclusive of that endpoint? And as you can see, it is inclusive of that endpoint. So as long as you hit that precise date time in your range in the end, it will include it in your loop, right? In, in, the, in the result, in the iterable that comes back. So let me put it back to, let's say five. I'll put it back to the original example. Okay. So notice how it just kept the same time as the start time and incremented days one by one. Now, if we wanted to, we could change to the start of each day by using the floor and ceiling methods that we just saw. So we could do this. We could say for DT and arrow range, day for the frame, and then we do a floor on the start date of, you know, based on the day. So we want a floor on the day. We want a ceiling on the day, the end date. And so we get, as expected, this, but now, of course, everything is, you know, at midnight. And so we could actually iterate through each day, getting the start and end of each day in our iteration quite easily. We can do the same loop that we had before, but instead of just printing the date, I'm going to get the floor and the ceiling. Of course, I could also use a span, right? I could just say DT span and then day, and then just take the first element, that would be the start, and then the, uh, the second element would be the end. But Arrow does that for us, essentially by using span range. So span range does essentially the same thing. We give it the start date and the end date. And then I want to span range the day, right? This is my framing, it's the day. And so I get 110, 110, the start of the day, end of the day, the 11th, start of the day, end of the day for the 11th, and so on, up to and including the 15th. Now, of course, I've only been using day here for the frames, but you can use years, quarters, hours, minutes, wh whatever you want, whatever supported by Arrow. Okay, the last thing I want to look at is humanizing dates. This is kind of an interesting one. I've covered the humanized library before, and essentially it's very similar. But I think it's a little simpler to use and it's baked into Arrow. So I don't have to have another dependency and import that and worry about it. So let's take a look. I'm going to create a date called DT now, which is my current date time. Then I'm, I'm doing this this way because I want to hold it fixed, right? And then I'm going to take 
a past date where I'm essentially going to shift two hours in the past. And in the future, I'm going to shift two hours in the future. And so what I really want to do here is say DT now, shift hours, okay? So we have these times. Now, for display purposes, and you'll often see that in calendars, for example, or websites where it tells you that, hey, you have an appointment, you know, coming up in, in uh, one hour and 10 minutes or in 56 minutes or whatever it is, right? So they're not exact times, but they kind of gives you and you know, an idea of when something happened or will happen. And this is called humanizing. So if I take DT past humanize, I get two hours ago. If I do the future humanize, I get in an hour. And why in an hour? Why not in two hours? Well, we'll get to that in a bit and you'll see why. But it's remember, these are rough approximations. The problem is that I shifted two hours, right, from that time. But between this time and now, right, this humanize two hours ago is looking at, based on my current time, my current time, not the time when I created this, right, based on my current time. So my current time has kind of moved forward by the time I reached this point here for the future. So it's not really two hours anymore. It's less than two hours. So that's why it says in an hour. And I'll show you just now how we can actually make that a little bit more precise. So what I said is that it's based on the current time. Well, what if we don't want to humanize based on the current time, but relative to some other time? Well, we can. We can just say, we can just pass in the date that we want to humanize relative to. So past humanized relative to DT now is two hours ago. Future humanized relative to DT now, which is that original DT now, is indeed exactly in two hours, because that's what I said, two hours. So how do we get a little bit more precise? And maybe we don't want to say an hour. Maybe we want to say, well, it's going to be in, you know, in 55 minutes or something like that. Well, this is called changing the granularity of the humanized string. And we just specify the granularity. So we can say DT future humanized granularity equals minute. And we get in 117 minutes, because remember, it's compared to the current date time. We can also use multiple granularities. For example, if we humanize based on hour and minute, then it tells us in an hour and 57 minutes. So you can even go down to you know seconds and so on, or you can go to months and years and quarters, all that kind of stuff. Again, you know, whatever arrow supports. And of course, we can also specify the relative date. So for example, if I say DT future humanize based on DT now, which was that original date that I created, not the current UTC date, and I set my granularity to hour and minutes, you see that I get in two hours and zero minutes. And of course, we can also have locales. So we can do a future humanize and we can set the locale to, let's say, FR. And it tells us in French, right? Dans une heure et cinquante-six minutes. Or we could humanize, let's say, to Hindi. And then we get this output over here, which unfortunately I cannot read. So a full list of currently implemented locales can be seen here. That's what the documentation states, that you can go here and basically just scroll down until you get to these ones here, these English locales. Basically, Anything that inherits from the locale, that's going to be that. So these are equivalent names for those locales, EN, ENUS, ENGB, and so on. So you've got that class, you've got the Italian locale, you've got the Spanish locale, French-based locale. I mean, there's, there's a ton of locales that have been implemented. That's one way of getting this list. Another way of getting this list, if we look at actually the code here, you'll notice that there is this uh, private, right, pseudo private variable that has, that is a dictionary with the strings and the locales and it gets populated at some point when the module is loaded. So what we can do is we can actually just import locales from Arrow, that's the module, and then we can look at this private variable, we can look at the items, and I, I did a sorted because I wanted to sort by the locale kind of code, right, and so this is a list, uh, alphabetically sorted, 
of all the locales that are defined in this particular um, instance, right, at this point in time. All right, and so that's the Arrow library. Great library, very useful, very popular, and I strongly urge you to take a look at it, and in your next project, if you're going to deal with dates and times, use it. It's great.